Hey guys, and welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. Today, I have a special treat for you. We're gonna be talking about power supplies, but not just one power supply or two. We actually have power supply buffet today. We're gonna to be covering everything from ATX power supplies on the low power range through workstation level and all the way to server. So stick with us, let's get started. Okay, so let's begin our journey today. We're talking about ATX power supplies. Everyone is, has a computer is familiar with them. They've been around forever. They come in all different sizes, as well as wattages, depending upon what you need. Power supplies have different efficiencies depending upon their rating. They could be platinum, they could be bronze, they could be silver, they could be gold. All my power units I have here are a gold level or above. Now, what does that mean? That means gold is considered generally 80% or higher. So it has an efficiency of 80% or higher of converting from AC power to DC power. That other 20% or thereabouts is wasted as heat. So the higher the efficiency of the power supply, the more efficient it's able to convert that to useful energy and you're not just wasting electricity. All our power supplies we're gonna be reviewing today are gonna to be at a level of gold or above. Looking at our first power supply today, this is an EVGA 600 watt. This little boy here is actually a very useful unit. I don't normally use these to power a lot of mining cards, but I use these as, this, as another one to kind of pair with a server power supply I'm gonna go into shortly. What you'll notice about these though that I wanted to point out is that these are non-modular. That means that all the cables are attached. The only plug you're gonna be plugging into here is the power cord into the back of it. These units are very, very good. They're low power. But again, unless you have a very small graphic card, you're not gonna have a lot of power to power, except possibly maybe one card. Let's look at our second power supply today. And this is more common, especially even with a lot of gaming systems today too. This is an EVGA 850 watt GQ power supply. Good quality is what the GQ I believe stands for, but it's a gold plus, and I'll have good efficiency with it. One thing that you'll notice right away is different with this is that this actually is, is semi-modular in the sense that it has the motherboard as cable is built into the unit, non-detachable, but all the individual PCIe, SATA, and Molex cables, they are put in as you see fit. It normally comes bundled in a separate package. So a lot of times it'll have extra SATA cables or extra Molex, cable, Molex cables. Only use the ones that you want. A very, very, very important point I want to emphasize here is, is that different manufacturers as well as different model cables are not necessarily compatible. I have a lot of power supplies around me, probably a dozen or so in this room. And it's very important that for this unit, I use these specific cables for it. I'm not gonna take the power supply cables that look just like it, maybe from another brand like Thermal Lake or another good brand and put them in this unit because it could potentially be incompatible, cause problems or fire or even worse. So always use the original cables that came and are authorized by the manufacturer for that specific unit. Also too, I don't even mix cables between manufacturers. So I have other cables for different units. I don't mix them. This cables belongs to this unit, end of story. The next power supply I really want to share with you is one of my favorite. This is an EVGA 1300 watt Supernova G2. This is known to be like one of the pinnacles of power supplies. These are used everywhere from small servers, workstations, and very, very commonplace in mining rigs. One of the reasons is because number one, they're fully modular. There is no motherboard, there's no cables built into it whatsoever. There's a motherboard cable, there's your CPU cables. It has six PCIe cables with it. This is like the primo of the Lexus or Mercedes per se of power supplies. When you come with, get this unit, it actually comes wrapped in its own nice little case. Even when you look at the cables, you realize that you're working at a different level. Let's just take a look inside the case and you'll see that these units come as top tier. They're braided cables. Everything is fully labeled and they have packages and casing. It's an incredible power supply. I also have a few of these and you'll see them even on the back wall. I have a lot of these in my rigs and I've worked with them very, very successfully. One of my favorite parts about this is that they're quiet. They even have an eco mode, which you can turn off the fans if they're not needed. You're doing a mining rig, especially if you're gonna be using it in the house. It's super, super quiet, even all the way up to its you know power limit. One of the best parts about these units is, is it comes with a manufacturer's 10 year warranty. EVGA has a top reputation for customer service. Everyone who I've ever spoken with has always had pleasant experience with them. Although EVTA does not sponsor me, 
I'm very happy with the results I've gotten from their products. I would, can definitely give it a thumbs up to endorse them. Some final points I want to emphasize while we're looking at ATX power supplies are the 80% rule. You may have heard it before. The rule is you don't want to exceed 80% of a power supply's capacity. So in the event of a 600 watt power supply, you don't want to really be going more than 480 watts. The same way too in the 1300 watt power supply, you don't want to be utilizing constant load of more than 1,040 watts. And that will help keep your unit safe. That's known as the 80% rule. Always keep that in mind with your ATX power supplies. Last point I want to discuss on these is power cords. We all have power cords. I have it from my old computer. I probably have it from one of my first IBMs from, I can't even remember how long ago. We generally store them up in a box and we figured, oh, well, it has the same end. I can plug this in or I can plug that one in. You can't. And be very, very careful of that so you don't cause a problem or even a fire. Different power supplies require a different gauge of wire. If I'm looking at a little one, maybe that's okay for a lighter gauge wire, but see the specs in the manual or see it online. If you're looking at a unit like this 1300 watt, if I put the wrong wire on here, it could burn up or it could be catastrophic. Here's a typical example right now. I'm looking at a very, very thin wire. This is probably from a computer monitor. This is actually 18 gauge. It really doesn't serve a place much in power supply units. This is a 14 gauge wire. This is meant to take the load and wattage of a unit like this or even these other ones safely and be able to deliver it. Make sure you're using the right cables. Again, if you're not sure, look inside your manual or look online. Very, very important. A lot of times when I'm building a mining rig, one power supply is not enough. Even when I have this nice big 1300 watt power supply, I'm only gonna be really be able to use 1,040 watts of it because we know the 80% rule. So I'll have to sometimes add a second power supply to a unit, but I want them to work in unison. And how do I do that? A common build that I do would be with a unit like this 850 GQ, as well as this 1300 watt power supply. In that situation, there's a special, it's called a 24 pin adapter, and it takes the power supply from two power you essentially plug both power supplies into it as two female inputs for the 24 pin. So I use this adapter cable and I can plug both motherboard cables into it and only a single cable goes to the motherboard. That way when I turn on the primary, it turns on the secondary automatically. You may see people on other YouTube or even in other articles saying you could do it by jumping it with a paper clip and yes you can. It's not a safe way to do it and I don't encourage it. So always spend a few dollars, get that cable that lets, lets you put them together and have peace of mind. Let's talk about servo power supplies. Servo power supplies are very, very efficient. They usually run a platinum efficiency, a lot of them. Some could be less, but if you buy the right ones, you'll get platinum efficiency. A key difference that sets these apart from ATX power supplies is that the 80% rule for limit does not apply. So if I have a 2400 watt PSU, like this one right here, I can run it up to 100. Let's take a look at the Hewlett Packard 1200 power supply. This is the most popular. A lot of people see it, but they be can quickly become intimidated by it because it looks like, wow, this is too industrial or too commercial. This is a base unit and it has what's called a breakout board on it. This breakout board comes in different sizes or it has different configurations. They can use them for crypto mining rigs. They're even pretty popular with the ASIC scene. These breakout boards, plug in here like that. And then you could have them with an amp meter or a volt meter. This one is even look, it has four times four pins. So you have 16 PCIe cables. And that's a big difference from your ATX supplies. We will look even at 1300 watt power supply by EVGA. That comes with six PCIe cables. And there are a lot of them are doubles, but that's gonna give you 12. This is giving you 16 right out of the bat. You don't need any additional splitters. So you would normally use splitters with the ATX power supplies. With servo power supplies, you'll usually have enough wires, or if not two, they actually make mini splitters that work for them too. These may look and sound great, and they are in many ways, but they don't have the same application that you would with like that EVGA 1300 watt. One of the key differences is that this is meant for a more commercial setting. As a result of it, when they run, they have small fans, and they will sometimes, if you're running them under a high load, they will, shh, they will start to whistle at you, depending upon how bad the heat load is. Plus they run hot. As a matter of fact, I'm actually gonna set up a test rig and I'm gonna show you that in a demonstration, that these run hot and may not be the ideal thing you wanna be putting in inside your home.
So if we take an in-depth look at what the Hewlett Packard, the 1200 Servo Power Supply does in action, we can see one. I just hooked up a temporary mining rig right now. I hooked up three graphic cards to it, they're 3080s, and I'm overclocking them kind of high right now just to get the voltage, but we're running this power supply at its limit. Where we're currently running at 906 or about 900 watts, just to get an idea for it. And you can quickly see surface temperature is 84, 82, you see it's 82 degrees in the room. But if I go to the unit, wow, I can see that unit's 119 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's something definitely to consider in your placement if you do consider using one of these in the home, but I think they're really more better set for a more commercial or an isolated setting. I wouldn't put it in my home. Plus they tend to get noisy as they get generate heat. Since they have small fans behind them, they, the fans spin high and they sometimes almost whistle. And right now it's not too hot in the room, so it's not whistling, but it definitely can get a lot noisier than this. We saved one of the best for last. This is the Hewlett Packard. 2400 watt platinum power supply the small unit has three fans in the back it's light and it packs a ton of power i actually use this in a mining rig behind me there's 800 mega hash mining ethereum and i'm running 10 cards on it right now it's held up wonderful i'm even pulling about 2100 watts out of it you hear it right now it's still pretty quiet because i'm not reaching my max load these are available in a different lot of different configurations they can only be run on 240 volts. They cannot be run on regular house power 120. They need to be on 240. They come with different breakout boards. This is a special breakout board. This breakout board is known as ZSX. And this breakout board will actually let you power a motherboard too. And if you buy it with a whole kit from Parallel Miner, it'll even come with the different cables for Molex, for the motherboard, and to even remote switch it. These work very simply by just plugging one in, plug the other one in. And now look at that. I have over 30 PCIe ports on this right now that I can plug into graphic cards. And that's what they're fantastic at. When you have a lot of cards, like I had a full rig, but then all of a sudden I got some graphic cards. I had the room in here as well as the power still reserved that I could easily add a couple more cards to it. These units come from, I get them from Parallel Miner we are actually an affiliate with them. I'm going to be putting a link down below. They have a lot of great product. Inventory sells quick, but they replenish fast. I believe it's a 30-day warranty on them. I've never had any problems with them, not to. These come with a lot of cables, which is a great part, so you don't have to be buying splitters. It actually came with a bunch of splitters, too, built into them, which is wonderful. So it saves costs. Although they can power motherboards and they're very, very good at that. The one thing I found though too is I needed to have additional power. So if I wanted to power some more fans or other devices on the mining rig, I wasn't too comfortable with doing them. And maybe I have to do a little bit more work with it and I'll be doing a follow-up. And that's where I would ideally pair these two together. I would normally power my motherboard with the 600 watt EVGA and that would be ideal and possibly one graphic card but then I would just use this to power all my PCIe ports on all my graphic cards. And that's what I have running right here in two rigs right now. Between them both, they're powering 20 graphic cards. Let's open up one of the strands of wires that comes with the servo power supply. You could see it's a nice, great wire, and it's great for powering between the riser as well as the power supply unit. In many situations, I'll have units wider or spread out more depending upon how I do my rig. And that's one thing that's great about Parallel Miner is because they also provide longer cables. Like you can buy them this, I believe it's up to three feet length you can get them. So sometimes if you have your power supply on one area and the cards on the other side, having a three foot long cable is definitely a blessing. And if you have to go to aftermarkets and buy stuff on Amazon for the splitters, like I've had to with a lot of other ones, the price can really add up. So sometimes you pay a little bit more for the quality of what you get. All of this with all these, the power cords, the motherboard cables, the Molex cables, the breakout boards, the splitters, it's a great value for the price. Now we've talked about the 80% rule when it comes to the ATX power supplies. Another important 80% rule I want to emphasize that I've learned, and this was taught to me, mind you, I'm not an electrician or claiming to be a professional, is when you're plugging in a power supply to a wall outlet, if you have a 15 amp circuit and if you have 120 watts, you have 1800 watts total to use. You only want to use up to 80% of it safely. You don't want a constant load beyond that. And that's what was taught to me 
please do your own research. Once again, I'm not an electrician, but play safe. Don't go over 80% of any of your power supply on a regular wall socket. In these crazy market conditions, given that we have such a shortage of semiconductors and other components, the prices of these have changed a lot over the past year. If we're looking at a unit like this, which is the Hewlett Packard, this is the 1200 watt PSU with this X16 breaker board, it's probably about $150, depending upon the configuration and number of cables you can be doing with it. If you're looking at a complete kit like this Hewlett Packard 2400 watt, power supply, which is actually for the Ace Rock kit. And it has all the wires and splitters and motherboard cables. This actually has the ZSX breakout board, as well as a board similar to like the X16 on it. This will probably run up about $300. If we're looking at this 600 watt power supply unit, these are much more budget friendly. They're probably about $65 I've seen on Amazon as well as Best Buy. This EVGA 850 watt GQ unit, this is anywhere between 100 to 150, depending upon where you get it. Last unit is the 1300 watt Supernova G2. That is definitely my favorite of the ATX power supplies. Those units are more costly, but I think they give you a lot of value. And having that 10 year warranty is very attractive to me. Those units normally go for about $300, although I have seen them occasionally on retailers lower down to 250. But when things get tight, the prices on all of this equipment seems to keep going up. We've covered five different power supplies and from server to ATX, and I hope this gave you some insight in choosing your power supply that you're gonna be using on your mining rig. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give us a big thumbs up like. If you haven't already subscribed, smash down on that subscribe button. Thank you. We welcome all your questions and comments. Please put them down below, and we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Until then, stay safe, happy mining.